Hello and welcome to this video which we're trying to keep short as possible that shows you how to do this type of problem should you receive it on your test or exam. First of all, we need to take this circuit and redraw it in the familiar form that we're accustomed to dealing with it because it's got the ground there as you can see in the very center of the square and the parts radiating from that. So let us start, we could start with the V1. So we put the node V1 and we see clearly that there are three wires coming away from the very top there where it says V1. And they're going to three different resistors, R1, R2, and R3. So notice that we have put that junction for V1 and we've put the three resistors. Now since we're trying to put the ground on the bottom, that one coming down from the V1 to the line on the bottom will be the R3 because that goes to ground. The other line coming across there in the middle will be the R1 because that's going to go to V2 and V3 and the one at the very top will be the one that goes all the way around to V4. So you can see the, ma the manner in which we're doing it right now. We've got the ground on the bottom and we have put in, we've followed around to R1. We've, we're going clockwise around the diagram and we've put in the V2. So after we put in the V2, the next one we have to put in is that. Because we follow around and we see that we have the three IY there with the uh, current uh, dependent voltage source and then we have reached V3 and we have a, a voltage dependent current source going to ground. And then finally we are moving around a circle in a clockwise direction. We put on that V4 and we connect the top to V4, the one that goes from V1 to V4 that R2 will be along the top with the voltage Vx. So that is the first thing that you need to do. Draw the diagram so that you may analyze it. Now the next thing we do is look at the diagram. So I've magnified it here so you can look at it. Clearly that 9 amp source on the right side is a known place to start. Because the 9 amps is going to come up and it's going to split at the junction. I keep telling my students, current behaves just like water. It splits and recombines just like rivers and streams. So what has happened? The current has flowed up from the source of current, which is the 9 amp supply. And it divides into I1 and I2. Now... We need some more currents in the diagram and we can see clearly that the only ones that we don't know are these two. Now you might wonder why I've put the direction I3 and I4 pointing differently to the, the I2 direction. That does not matter. When you have finished, you may solve it with the currents I3 and I4 going the other way. All that will happen is that you will get some negative results and the negative sign means that the actual current flows in the opposite direction. Okay, so when you get a positive result for current, that means you put the arrow in the correct direction. When you get a negative result for the current, that means you put your arrow on in the wrong direction. But it doesn't mean that the problem is not going to come out. And you can always correct your currents at the end and try again and get a positive result. Okay. So that's what you would do. Now the next thing you would need to do would be to write some equations for those currents. And uh, that is what we have done here. Um, we have written e current equations at the node 1, the node 3, 
and the node 4. Okay. Why could we not write an equation for the current at node 2? You will notice that V2 is missing. The reason we cannot write a good current equation at V2 is because we don't know what current is flowing through the 2-volt voltage source. We do not know that current. It could be anything. There is no way to know what that current is. So there is no point in writing any equation at the V2 node. Now we turn our attention to the voltage equations, otherwise known as KVL equations. And you will see that as we've added the KVL equations, we have used two loops marked in brown, loop 1 and loop 2. Now, why did we use those loops? And the reason why we use those loops is because they're the only loops that we can use. When you look at loop 1, you will see that we have a voltage which we know a voltage source which we know, and two resistors which give us a positive voltage once we factor in the currents. So we have an equation that we can write for loop 1. In loop 2, we have the same situation. We have voltage, dependent voltage source, but we know the current. That's 3IY. That will be the voltage. And um, we can write a voltage voltages around that loop. Notice the other two loops in the problem cannot be used because we do not know the voltages across either the 9-amp source on the right or the dependent source marked 2VX. Once again, we cannot predict and do not know the voltages across current sources. So that is all the equations that we may write. We have written the current equations and the um, voltage equations. And you can take your time to research that. Now, there is one other equation that's very useful, which is not included in this. And that is the equation that is associated with Vx. Since Vx is a controlling equation, we might like to write one more. And we have done it there using Ohm's law at R2 on the top of the diagram. We have associated the term Vx with 2i1. Why would we want to do that? Because when we look at the equation for loop 2, we see Vx in there. And for those two loop equations, we see that they're all currents except for the Vx. So knowing that Vx equals to 2i1 in equation 5 is going to be very useful because the technique that we use to solve the problem is to substitute the current equations in 1 to 3 into the voltage equations in 4 and 5. So when we move on now, you will see that we have done that on the left and right side. We have put the current equation 3 into the voltage equation 4. And we have put three of the current equations, 1, 3, and 6, into the voltage equation 5. Okay, so study that and go back to the last page and compare it. And what we have done is we have just done some algebra to rearrange our equations after we've substituted so that our equations are only in two unknowns, I1 and IY. And we have tidied them up so that we can use and put it in a matrix form, which is the normal way that we would like to solve our linear simultaneous equations, but our so-called complicated network that gave us five equations has now been distilled into only two unknowns, I1 and IY. And we simply plug the coefficients of those terms into the matrix 
and then we have the constant vector on the right and we can solve that either in a calculator that deals with matrices or we can solve it in an online calculator. I always encourage my students to do that. It's quite simple to actually do this manually because it's only a two by two matrix. But if you have three or more to solve, make sure you always use your online calculator or get a calculator that does matrices for you, such as the HP 50G or the HP Prime. I used to recommend TI calculators, but the HP calculators are actually much more powerful. Now, uh, we have solved it here on the page, and notice the diagram, sorry, notice that from the diagram, we are able now to immediately establish our voltages V1 to V4 because of the resistors that are coming up from ground. V2 is obviously just the two volt source. V1 is four times IY and uh, V3 would be V2 minus three IY and V4 would be V1 plus two I1. So you can look back and see how this is done. Just look at the diagram and it should become plain that because we do not know, because we do not know the voltages across current sources, we have to use this method to find our V1 to V4. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.